Fuel cells are based on, it, they use some pretty clever chemistry. And they're based on the idea that hydrogen gas and oxygen gas always come together to make water whenever they can. So H2 plus O2 makes H2O. Hydrogen gas and water come together to make uh, water. Uh, hyd hydrogen gas and oxygen gas come together to make water. These guys will come together whenever they have the opportunity. And whenever they have the opportunity, they'll do so very quickly and they'll, 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 they'll do so with a lot of energy. Hydrogen and oxygen coming together are a little bit like uh, the boys and girls at summer camp who are going to try really hard uh, to break into each other's dorms and, and come together to form couples. Let's build on that analogy to try to understand how a fuel cell is actually creating energy uh, maybe in a car or in a spacecraft or an airplane. In a fuel cell, there, there are sort of two different tanks. On one side, we have one that contains a lot of H2, hydrogen gas. Now, hydrogen gas is coming in here, okay? On the other side, we have one that contains a lot of, uh, a lot of O2, a lot of oxygen. So this is like the boys' dorm and the girls' dorm at summer camp, all right? These guys want to come together really badly, but they can't because there's a barrier in, in between, just like any good, uh, any good counselors would have set up at camp. There's a barrier that's going to prevent these H2s, we'll call these the boys, from coming over here. So uh, they want to. They want to come over here so badly, mix with the O2, form couples, but they can't because there's this barrier right here separating. So let's look at how they do this. Well, it turns out that this barrier isn't quite as ominous as it seems. This barrier may be like a fence at camp with big slats or that's a little bit above the ground. It's not impervious to everything. Positively charged things can get through the barrier. Negatively or neutral things they can't get through. So maybe it's sort of like a fence that really short kids at camp can squeeze under, uh, but other kids can't. So, in order for hydrogen to be able to come over here, one thing happens. Right here, there's what's called a catalyst. The catalyst is put there because it takes advantage of the fact that only positive things can get through the barrier. Now, all atoms, all molecules are made up of positive things, protons, and negative things, electrons. So, the catalyst is placed there because scientists who designed the fuel cell pretty much said, aha, Positive things can pass through the barrier, negative things can't. So what we'll do is we'll take the hydrogen and we'll split it. We'll split it into two parts. We'll split it into a positive part that can pass through the barrier, and we'll split it into a negative part that can't pass through the barrier. So here's the catalyst. Catalysts are often made of, of platinum, um, so they're expensive um, because people would just as soon use that for, for bling, um, for, for grills, or for cell phones or whatever. Um, so that is one of the reasons why fuel cells are so expensive. Here's what happens in the catalyst. H2, on its way to get to the O2, passes through the catalyst. Catalyst splits it into two pieces. Maybe you can think of the H2 sort of like a really tiny kid and a bigger kid who are both trying to squeeze into the girls' store. And they're like, ah, in order for us to get over there, we're going to have to split up. The little kid says, okay, we'll split up. You go around the long way, and I'll go around the short way because I'm able to get under the barrier. So, H plus gets split into two parts. It gets split into two H pluses, and there's a lot more uh, H2 obviously here than just one molecule. And it gets split into two E minuses, which are electrons. Now, as I said before, the H pluses, they're like the skinny, skinny, small little kid that can squeeze under the barrier. So these H pluses, by virtue of their positive charge, they can squeeze right under. And that's what this arrow indicates they move there. They're squeezing them. And now they end up on the other side of the barrier. But they're negatively charged buddies. Maybe the larger kids they were teamed up with in order to achieve this mission of breaking into the girls' dorm. They're not so lucky because they can't pass through this, this barrier that blocks all positive charge. So imagine that we have this big barrier separating the boys' dorm and the girls' dorm. And if people are really ambitious, they'll be able to run all the way around me, like run into town and down a street, and then they come back out on the other side of the barrier. And that's essentially what happens here. 
because a positive because these negatively charged electrons can't pass through the barrier, they're instead given another route around. It's a long way around, but they'll still get there. Um, they'll still get there eventually. So here is the route that these electrons are going to take. Again, they're taking the long way through town, or the long way through the forest, or the cornfield, whatever is separating these guys. So, H pluses obviously went right through. These E minuses, on the other hand, the electrons, and I'm going to write this right here so we can keep track of what they are, they're, they're electrons. The electrons can enter this pipe, they can flow through the pipe, and then they end up coming out on the other side right here after they've made their trek through the forest, through the woods, they come out on the other side. Now on the other side we have H pluses and the E minuses, they join back together. It's like the short guys and the big guys team back up on the other side of the barrier to then go break into the girls dorm. These guys, two H's, two electrons, come together to cancel each other's charges out. All of them come together. Here are the arrows. All these four things are going to come together and they're going to make an H plus, an H2. And that H2, just as we said earlier, wants to combine with the O2. The H2 and the O2 come together and what do they create? The H2 and the O2 come together to create water. So, big deal. Why does this create energy? We have the H2s breaking up into two pieces, splitting up, finding different ways over to the girls' dorm, eventually connecting up with the O2 and forming water. Big deal. Here's a big deal. Think about this pipe that the electrons are having to travel through in order to get to the other side. What sort of a thing can electrons travel through? Well, it's not a pipe. Instead of a pipe, what this is, is this is a wire because electrons can flow through wires. Now, whenever we have electrons flowing through wires, we call that something. Electrons flowing through wires is what we call electricity. Electricity. So these guys moving through here are causing electricity to flow. H pluses move through here, but the E minuses moving through here are a moving current. That is where the energy from fuel cells comes from. So there are, there, are, there are electrons moving through this wire, trying to sneak up, connect with the H pluses, and form water. What we can do is we can take advantage of the fact that the electrons are moving through this wire, and, for example, we could go ahead and we could, we could take this wire and we could hook it up to a light bulb. And we could make that light bulb turn on. Could make that light bulb go bright because the current that's traveling through that is causing electricity to happen. Now, at the same time, if this were a car, we could go ahead and we could hook this up to an electric motor that would cause the wheels to spin. So once again, let's look at the whole deal just to make sure that this all makes sense. H2 over here, O2 over here. All they want to do is combine and form water. But the, there's a barrier between there that only positively charged hydrogens can get through. So there's a catalyst that breaks the H2 into its component parts into positive H pluses, negative electrons. H pluses can move right through that barrier, but the electrons can't. Instead, the electrons have to flow through this wire to meet up with the H pluses on the other side to make water. When the electrons flow through this wire, they're creating electricity, they're generating electricity. And that electricity is used to power the motor of a car, if this fuel cell is being used in an automobile. Now, the final word is, think about what's getting created. In an automobile engine, we're creating carbon dioxide if it's perfectly efficient, but usually there's also soot, there's uh, a whole variety of other components like carbon monoxide, uh, sulfur dioxides, and other chemicals. A fuel cell engine, after the H2 and the O2 have combined, it creates only water. It creates, creates water. Here's a, little, here's a little drop of water to show you what's going on. So many people are really interested in the idea of fuel cell cars because they don't create any pollution, they only create water.